and action. Hey everyone, welcome to One Different Map. My name is Josh Loud, and today. Hey, 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 wait, what are you doing? You, were, you weren't here. Yeah, I'm here now. Alright. Yeah, come yeah. on, let, let's, come, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> Alright. Logo. Fit check. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome into Wine Diplomat. I'm Eureka, and today we are going to talk about buying a wine solely because of the label. And this is a thing that we're doing every month. We pick a different wine, we go to the store, and we pick out a wine not because of a, of a rating or because of maybe the particular winemaker, but only because of what that bottle looks like. So uh, if you haven't seen any of the other videos, there's a whole bunch of them for you to check out, and we release videos every single Friday, and you can do your part to help us out for free by clicking that little like button clicking that little subscribe button so that you get all this content immediately as soon as it drops. And we want you to be the first ones to get it. So today we have a really good treat. Uh, this is a cool bottle. It's one that I've, I've, I've looked upon for a while and been waiting to taste it. And that is, uh, get it here, Anaro Vera Rosé. So this is a Spanish rosé, but when you're just looking at the label right from the get-go, it doesn't look like your run-of-the-mill, everyday Spanish wine, right? This is definitely marketed to be more lively. This is marketed to be more like uh, maybe for younger people or just evoking like really good artwork. And, and that's what I like too. You've got this beautiful uh, lady here. She is looking up to the sky and then bursting out of out of her almost like her personality like her aura is just like launching out of here as it as it flies and so it just kind of gets more there's like random flowers and curves and shapes and colors that are just emanating from this very colorful label and so it, it just invokes you know nature it invokes like random art like surrealism almost just flying out here I, i'm a big big fan i mean even i'll get this even the top here it's just everything about this wine is is speaking to kind of youth and and newness and uh just like almost like the flavor of this wine is going to burst out of the of the glass like everything about this is is telling me about freshness and liveliness and so i hope the wine matches up to that so first uh, let's talk about this particular wine. So if I'm looking at this bottle, on the very front of it, it just has the name of the company on, or the, of the brand, Honoro Vera. It tells me it is a rosé and it's from 2020. So that's good on the front of the label. As we move to the back, there's a couple things. One, it tells me where it's from. This is a... Uh, uh, Sorry about the pronunciations. If I if I kill these, I'm I'm so sorry. But uh, I've heard uh, Yumia and Yumilia. Uh, I've heard both of those. But this is a Spanish uh, wine area that's pretty cool. It's 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 located inland, but closer to uh, the Mediterranean Sea, where uh, in Spain. So you're kind of if you're looking at Spain, it's kind of in the the eastern south southeastern part where the Mediterranean Sea is. Um, but it also comes from the uh, Gill family estates. There's there's their logo right there. And the Juan Gill family is one that does some other wines that are more expensive, like in the kind of $40 and up range. They do the silver label red wine, and they do a blue label red wine that's, that's very famous and popular. This, Anara Vera, I believe is their just like uh, everyday wine brand. It's no more than 15 bucks this i believe we paid 10 bucks for this bottle here and that's kind of where i'm going i'm like i know one gill because i can read that um even if i didn't know the area of wine uh, it comes from spain uh it is vegan uh th that we'll get into that uh in another video about like what makes a wine vegan or not vegan that's a really good question that we get from time to time 
but you get this little label. So if you're if you're uh, looking for vegan wine, this is definitely for that. And it's uh, about 12.5% alcohol. So this is all the information that I'm getting from the label. If I were just picking this off the wall, I would uh, I'd be able to see a couple things and. Let's see what the wine tastes like, though. So the first thing, as we pour the wine, uh, I already got some in my glass. But uh, what's cool is this is a screw top. So the Stelvin cap, as it's as it's referred to in the industry, the screw cap is awesome. Um, it actually holds in the the wine a little better against oxygenation. So and there's no cork, so you never get a bad cork or cork taint or something like that. Plus. Like here in Florida, if you're taking this on the boat or if you're taking this to the to, to outdoors, a park or beach or something like that, um, easy access, boom, no corkscrew needed. So less is more with this. But let's get into what's in the glass, all right? I'll, I'll bring this over here. Uh, if you've seen our other video that we just uploaded a couple weeks ago about blind tasting rosés, you'll see that there are such... Uh, a big variety of colors of pinkness of rosé and that's because of different ways that a winemaker can make the wine. When we take a look here, this is that light pink salmon color. Um, it's just, it's not too vibrant of a pink, like it doesn't look like candy. It's not super thinly pink, like just a, like a little shade or almost more like a white wine. This is almost like this perfect like you can see through it it's a very light uh, pink and it reminds me a lot of some of the most famous rosés in Cote de Provence have this very similar uh, light color uh, doing a little bit of research this wasn't on the bottle but doing a little bit of research this wine is a blend of two red grapes it is Tempranillo and Syrah so in the other video we we mentioned one of the ways that you can make rosé is to take well, red wine and white wine and put it together and make pink wine. But this way, the way that these guys made it is to take red grapes and you don't let the skins come in contact with the juice as much. So this is all red grapes. This is all Syrah and this is all uh, Tempranillo put together. But uh, the, the lower skin contact makes this very nice uh, juicy pink color to it. So it smells so good. <laughs> It's one of my favorite wines that we've had on the channel. So I get uh, what I'm hoping to get in a rosé is somewhere in the cranberry, raspberry, strawberry world. Like that's what I'm expecting. And this, it delivers that in spades. This is just like you get kind of like dried cherries and uh, strawberries mostly. But it's it's not kind of like a seltzer where you basically can't taste or smell anything. Like it's, it's light, but it isn't overbearing, but it's very, very pleasant. Mm. This is a, the, Josh, this is a, this is a, this is a really good, like everyday wine, man. Uh, we were talking off camera about, you know, recommending where would you drink this this is a wine as i as i taste this i gotta go back in here this is it's not overbearing i you any anywhere you would drink a white wine like um you get the nice tartness from the cranberry strawberry thing going on i would do this anywhere you would do a savion blanc or a really good pinot grigio or an unoaked chardonnay this would also work. I, I think this would go well with all the foods that that would go with. If it's seafood, if it's salads, if it's, um, you know, maybe uh, pork, pork chops, things like that. And maybe not barbecue, maybe not steak. But uh, if this is like the first wine of the night and you know you're going to drink another like heartier red later on, I think this would go really well for that. So it's an inexpensive wine. It's under 15 bucks. It's very well made. I mean, the finish now that I've been counting in the background, it has a very long finish. Uh, first, it's it's confirmed with those cherries, the strawberries, and that tartness, like a raspberry cranberry thing. Um, very pleasant, and they're all all those flavors are kind of playing along 
there's no tannins, there's no extra um, uh, tertiary flavor. Like I don't think this has seen any like wood or anything like that, but it's just very light, very refreshing, very crisp, and uh, very much I need to pour another glass and drink this because it's, it's the bomb right here. Now that I've tasted it a couple times, it also kind of tastes like it has a little bit of uh, sugar, not a, in a bad way either. Because of that acidity, because of that tartness, a little bit of sugar to make it off dry is what we would call it. Making it an off dry rosé is almost like the perfect choice in this because it isn't too tart. It isn't too uh, like um, acidic. It has a good balance just because of a little bit of sugar. And I mean, it's just fruity without being sweet. It's bold without being overbearing. I mean, it's just, it, it exists in this world where the, the it, it, it gives you all these flavors. It lasts a long time in between sips so that if I were going into a salad, if I were going into that, I would still be tasting my wine as I, as I eat the food. And then after the food has been going around, now I'm ready to take another sip of the wine. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's just, it's a nice, pleasant wine. Um, I, I can't say enough about like this. This is one of the times where I'll put this back on screen. This is one of those times where um, if you're looking at this label, you, if uh, this would kind of lure you in with great graphics, it kind of tells you a little bit about how explosive and how, you know, fresh and, and almost like the, the kind of floral elements of this wine uh, label kind of, they're getting me ready for a, an, a floral explosion or a um, like freshness and newness and youth and, vi you know, a very vibrant young lady on the, on the label. And this is one of those times where it's just pleasant. Like if you went to buy this, I think uh, I'm definitely... Uh, more than surprised and more than happy that, that we got this wine and we can't wait to finish the rest of this off screen. Um, so the last thing I'll do as we, we, we beg to get out of here, the last thing we'll say is, uh, have you had this wine? If you go get this wine, let us know in the comments right now. Is this one of the wines that you've had before? Have you drank other stuff from one gill? I want to know your reaction to this wine. Um, and you know, if, if you, if you try anything else, just let us know in the comments, guys. We want to talk to you. Another thing you can do while you're there on the YouTube channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. That way you get every single video brand new in your inbox right when we do it. You're the first one to get it. So, uh, you know, what are you waiting for? Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And finally, from all of us, for my man Josh behind the camera, for my wife, uh, little baby Valtteri, the, uh, the, the sheep and little Stoli running around my cats, all of us here at the Wine Diplomat family, we say thank you for your time. We say thank you for liking and subscribing to our video. And we can't wait to make another one for you. So for Anaro Vera, from all of us at Wine Diplomat, we say thank you and cheers. Hey everyone, welcome to Whiskey Diplomat.